Hello and welcome to the screencast for A2 Health and Social Care, Unit 9, Working in Health and Social Care. And in this screencast we're going to be looking at new technological developments and this links up to task 2 of your assignment where you're considering the factors that might influence the availability of job opportunities in health and social care. So this screencast will be looking at some of the new technological developments that might affect people working in health health, social care or children's services. In order to make the most of this screencast you'll be required to make Cornell notes and don't forget to pause and go back if there's something that you don't quite understand or if there's something that you need repeating. And don't forget that the link to the assignment is that you are meant to be researching technology which impacts on the role of the two jobs that you're looking at um, in your assignment. In 1834, a journalist in the Times wrote of the stethoscope that it would never come into general use. This was because it would be too difficult for doctors to adapt to their general practice and also that patients would not allow such an intimate device to be used on their bodies. Now, the stethoscope is one of the first things we associate with healthcare and medicine. We've come a long way since the invention of the stethoscope and this screencast focuses on new technology that is used in health, social care and children's services. I'll give examples of new technologies and how it may be used and I will also discuss some of the impacts that technology has on professionals, service users and working practices. As ever, as you go through the screencast, make Cornell notes and bring them into the lesson. We often think about technology in its narrowest form. However, it's not just about computers, information and communication. Technology is anything that helps us to do what we want to do. Make a list of technologies that you think might be used in health, social care and child care. Pause this screencast whilst you're doing it. Perhaps the most important development in health, social care and children's services over the last 20 or so years is the development of computer technology and the network used in the workplace. And this has vastly improved the ability of organisations to communicate both within the organisation and also with each other. This is important because it's enabled practitioners to neatly organise data about clients, read case notes without struggling to decipher handwriting and evaluate the effectiveness of the services without digging through reams of paper files. The electronic system also allows workers to be more mobile in the services they provide because they can access client records using an internet connection rather than carrying around paper files. It also enables data sharing using the multi-agency approach. In terms of teaching and learning, the digital technology offers up a whole range of different applications that could be used to help um, in the classroom. And you probably noticed some of the things that have been used at college in your lessons. With applications like Socrative, Twitter, Facebook, blogging and those kinds of things being used by teachers to teach their subjects. OK, now one of the things that digital technology has enabled are advanced surgery techniques in medicine. This is an example of one of those. This is called a stent. Uh, and in the technical vocabulary of medicine, it's a mesh tube which is inserted into a natural passage or conduit in the body. In this case, it's inserted into a blocked artery in the heart. Um, and it enables the surgeon to... Uh, kind of create um, a passage for the blood to flow more freely. And the term is also used to refer to a, a, a tube which um, temporarily holds such a natural conduit open to allow access for surgery. My next example is the MRI scanner. MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. It's a medical imaging technique used in radiology to visualise internal structures of the body in more detail than perhaps X-ray would be able to show. The next example of technology here is the monitor. 
okay, and doctors and nurses are trained about how to read the data on the monitor, and the data will consist of um, the pul patient's pulse, blood pressure, and respiratory status. And digital technology has enabled these things to be measured much more accurately than they used to be able to do. Another new surgical development in medical technology is keyhole surgery. This is also known as min minimally invasive surgery or band-aid surgery. It's a mod modern surgical technique in which operations in the abdomen are performed through small incisions, usually between 0.5 and 1.5 centimetres, as opposed to the larger incisions um, needed in more regular operations. Keyhole surgery makes use of images displayed on TV monitors to magnify the surgical elements. Assistive technology is the name given to assistive, adaptive and rehabilitative devices for people with disabilities. It also includes the process used in selecting, locating and using them. Assistive technology promotes greater independence by enabling people to perform tasks that they were formerly unable to accomplish or had great difficulty accomplishing. Examples of assistive technology in this picture you can see hearing aids, specially adapted keyboards and phones, telephone there with large number pads. So these are all examples of assistive technology. OK, here's an example of technology used in social care, and this is a personal alarm. So the alarm is worn round uh, the person's neck, and you can see there's a big red button there. Um, and if the uh, person has an accident or a fall or needs assistance, then they can press the button um, and it activates an alarm remotely somewhere, and someone will come along um, and, and, and come to that person's aid. Another example of assistive technology here, this mobility aid. And here we have a stair lift. OK, so here's an example of um, a new technology being used in the primary school classroom. And you can see here the students are using the interactive whiteboard. Interactive whiteboard opens up a whole load of possibilities for teaching and learning. Students can come to the whiteboard and um, can manipulate uh, sorting activities and here the student is manipulating an abacus in a maths lesson. But the interactive whiteboard can also be used for things like quizzes, checking spelling, punctuation, grammar, all this kind of literacy and numeracy applications. Um, and could also be used as a kind of giant computer monitor. So we could have the internet on there and we can look up stuff and we can have a look at uh, students' records and progression. So it's a really, really useful tool for a teacher in the classroom. And you've probably noticed in your lessons here at college that increasingly teachers are using mobile devices like the iPad or Android devices, um, iPhones, mobile phones, smartphones to um, use in the classroom uh, for students to kind of complete activities and use kind of applications like Socrative and Quizlet. And this is an example of a very young child um, practicing her spelling, um, learning how to write using an, an iPad application. So in summary then, in health, social care and early years, technology should be seen as an enabler, improving health educational outcomes for service users, saving us time and money, and accessing better information so that better decisions can be made about care. Now, you could probably think of some issues and problems with introducing new technology in any workplace. And I've got three issues here which I'm going to discuss now. So one of the issues is that some practitioners are reluctant to use new technology. Okay, It's always difficult to introduce people to new things, particularly if they've been used to doing something a particular way for many years. So this might be a problem that... Uh, that, that you might face introducing new technology into the workplace. 
linked to this is that sometimes new skills are required to operate the technology. So organisations would have to be thinking about kind of training their staff up to uh, make sure that they are proficient. And then, of course, it's going to take some time to get used to the technology. And the technology might have some kind of problems or teething issues. Uh, when you introduce something new, there's often problems which are associated with only get picked up when the system is be being used. And the last issue I've got on this slide is that sometimes there are concerns that technology might replace the need for staff. So it might end up people being made redundant because the technology is able to do the jobs that people would have, would have done. And there, an example of this would be... Um, you know, maybe the reduction of administrative staff because computer programs can actually take over some of the work that would have previously been done by um, administrative staff. So things like filing and paperwork, which is automatically done by computer systems. So just to go back to the assignment then, and the link to the assignment, you need to discuss the different types of technology used in your chosen area. So you need to think about the two job roles and the type of technology that might be used with them. You need to say how the use of the, the technology might impact on the practitioners and also the service users. And you've also got to think about does the technology impact on employment opportunities? So is it going to make people redundant or is it going to make, mean that people need to acquire new skills and maybe, uh, maybe it's going to create new jobs? Okay, so these are the kind of things you need to think about. Well, so this brings us to the end of the screencast on uh, technology and the impact on technology in the workplace.